I keep hearing these conflicting arguments from the same organizations and people. Um, they want things done on a statewide basis for consistency because they believe that's the better way to do it on the one hand. On the other hand, they fight tooth and nail when proposals are made that would, by many people's arguments and by many popularity polls and other measures, improve the lives of Minnesotans on a statewide basis. You kind of can't have it both ways. And one of the ways that, we, that these measures get blocked is that bills don't get heard. And that is something that happened uh, on an important measure this year in the Senate, in the Jobs Committee. And I want to talk about a few things that matter, particularly to the Jobs Committee, but to all of us and certainly to all of Minnesotans, issues that we've all been concerned about and working on. Workforce shortage, making sure that we're addressing challenges that face small and medium-sized businesses, access to quality child care, access to safe and quality elder care, making sure that we have healthy babies and mothers and that we're giving children a good start to life, economic insecurity across all communities, across all parts of this state, and racial disparities, both in terms of health and economic security. And when I speak of the health insecurities, that's, it's the health disparities. One of the things that I think is really important to note is that maternal mortality among African-American mothers is disgraceful in this country, and we need to do better. Minnesotans believe in caring for one another, yet the vast majority of working Minnesotans don't have access to benefits that would allow them to take paid leave for family and medical reasons. Only 17% of the American workforce has access to paid family leave through their employer, and less than 40% has access to personal medical leave. As a result, Minnesotans face impossible choices between losing a paycheck and caring for a new child, an aging loved one, or themselves when faced with a major illness or injury. Our current system is costly to workers, families, businesses, and ultimately our economy. Paid family and medical leave is overwhelmingly popular across party lines and is already passed in seven states and has been advocated in states around the country and in fact by President Trump. By adopting paid family and medical leave, we could begin to solve our caregiving crisis while leveling the playing field for all Minnesotans. So why is this needed? How could it make a difference in the lives of Minnesotans? Well, let's look at a few facts. Among working mothers, only about half are able to take any kind of paid leave, including sick and vacation time when their babies are born. There are tremendous health benefits to babies when mothers take longer leaves, regular checkups and immunizations, longer time breastfeeding, and much more. And we have some ha handouts being passed out right now, one of which is um, a, a Star Tribune editorial from a doctor who addresses and tells some powerful stories on that front. More than 40 percent, more than 40 percent of all bankruptcies in the United States are a result of lost income when the employee or a family member becomes ill. And in rural communities, which is consistently and, and rightly an important area of concern for this body, Minnesota workers encounter a greater need for family and medical leave. And again, among the, the pieces that are being distributed, there is a, a, an important research document that was conducted by the Humphrey School at the U studying this issue uh, in rural communities and showing that the need is greater and there is less access to care resources. According to the, a 2018 study that is cited, more than half of rural workers said they would very likely face hardship if they had to take a few months of unpaid time off work compared to just 40% in the metro. So how does paid ma family medical leave work? It would be a state-administered insurance program where everyone contributes and everyone benefits. And there is a handout that summarizes briefly how that works. I'll recap a few of the main points. It would provide up to up to 12 weeks of partial wage replacement for family leave so that Minnesotans can take care of themselves and their families. It would provide up to 12 weeks of partial wage replacement for medical leave, including pregnancy, so that Minnesotans can take care of themselves. It would replace wages on a progressive scale, starting at 90% for lowest income workers, up to 55% of an employee's salary at an average of 66%, while protecting job and healthcare benefits so Minnesotans can experience economic security during their leave. 
It would keep costs low for all by creating a large statewide risk pool and equally sharing costs between employers and employees with both contributing 0.31% on employee earnings. For a median worker and their employer, this costs less than $2 a week, the proverbial cup of coffee. It would build on Minnesotans, Minnesota's leading unemployment insurance administration under deed to ensure program stability for employees, employers, and the state. There are so many benefits of paid family and medical leave to a range of Minnesotans. For employees, they would get economic security for their families during important life events, improve parent and child health and well-being, and allow elders to age in their homes and communities. For employers, they would, see, they would benefit their businesses by reducing turnover and boost employee productivity and morale, and, and benefit small businesses by helping play, level the playing field. You know, one of the things that's really interesting is that large companies and large government units, including the state of Minnesota and the big cities and, and counties, are already providing these benefits to their employees. They're not doing it to be nice. They're doing it because it's good business, because they know that turnover is expensive, and they know that they need to be offering these benefits to attract and retain high-quality workers. And when big businesses are able to do that, that gives them an advantage over small and medium-sized businesses. Uh, and it's worth noting that nearly half of Minnesotans workforce currently works in small business. 47.8%, 1.2 million people, but almost all small businesses lack the capital and the scale to provide these kinds of earned benefits, even if the employers, the business owners want to provide them. And in states where uh, have these policies, these benefits have been implemented, the vast majority of employers report that paid family leave had a positive or no noticeable effect on productivity, profitability, turnover, and morale. Finally, for all Minnesotans, it would reduce reliance on public assistance programs, increase women's participation in the paid workforce, which would be very helpful as we face a significant workforce shortage, and it would be simple and cost effective. So, Mr. President, I would like to offer then the A25 amendment. Senator Kent offers the A25 amendment. The Secretary will report the amendment. Senator Kent moves to amend House File Number 2208 amended as pursuant to Rule 45 as follows, page 120, after line 24, insert. This is the A25 amendment. Senator Kent. Thank you, Mr. President. This amendment is the language of House File 5 after it has been through a robust debate um, with many committee stops, hearing from stakeholders, business owners, um, doctors, caregivers, family members, parents, and it's been refined over time. There was a particular concern about contract workers and, and real, real estate companies, and changes were made through that committee process to be reflective of that. That bill has been evolved. It is what my bill would might have been if it could have gotten a hearing over here. Um, my mine was Senate File 1060, and I made a hearing request on February 18th, but here we are looking at the 1st of May. So, Mr. President and members, this is important. Others have described this as a win, 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 because it helps Minnesotans, young and old, and their caregivers. It helps employers, and ultimately, it will help our state. So, members, I hope you will give some serious consideration to the A25 amendment. Thank you.